Now that we got WordPress installed and ready to go, the next step is to uh, first go to your profile page and we want to change the auto generated password to something that we can remember. So you click on this link up here and you see in the profile, you have all kinds of different options available to you. So what we're going to do is actually go down to new password. And I'm just going to put in something really uh, stupid, simple that we're all familiar with. One, two, three, four, five. Now, when you put your real password to update, really try to put in something um, a little bit stronger than one, two, three, four, five, you know, as I explained before, you want to try to put in a password that has a, a mixture of maybe numbers and letters, maybe a dash or an underscore here and there. And uh, you may change the case. For instance, you may have an uppercase and lowercase, just so that people can't hack it as easily as uh, one, two, three, four, five would be. So I'm just going to update that profile. So there we go. So we've updated the profile with the new password, uh, replacing the auto generated password that WordPress created for us. While we're here in the profile page, what we're going to do is look at some of the options. You can change the scheme, the color of the admin panel. This is the default gray. You can go back to the more traditional blue just by selecting this. And you got all kinds of other options. You can put your name. This sort of thing can be experimented with in terms of the pulse. So if I change my nickname to Stefan, when I post, this will be displayed as opposed to admin. Well, not, excuse me. Now I can choose it right here, Stefan. Display name publicly as Stefan. Just in case when you write post, you don't want to have admin being displayed. Beyond that, I think a lot of these things are sort of self-explanatory. Um, again, you can always update your password anytime you like. Whenever you make changes though here, you hit the update profile and the profile is updated. WordPress is a blogging engine, but it also allows you to um, incorporate CMS like features. And one of these features is the ability to have several authors on the same blog. And you can actually set the author's uh, type, if you will, uh, so you can give them different privileges within the context of your blog. So what does all that mean? Well, we'll take a look. Authors and users. Right now, there's one author. And you see my face. And the reason you can see my face is because WordPress is using something called Gravidars, where I have a sort of a universally accepted face, a picture rather, called a Gravatar, and WordPress is smart enough to know that, and it's bound to my email address. Again, you could look that up in um, online. You could find information about that. Anyway, going back to the authors and users, right now we have only one author. So let's look at the add new function here. We're going to add a new author. So I'm going to add an author. I'm going to call him um, Jimmy. Should sure spell it right. So Jimmy. And I'll say his name is Jimmy. And uh, I can. Anyhow, it's not really super important, but I'm going to put another email address. You can't use the same email address. And I'm going to use the same password I always use for this video. And I can set whether this person is a subscriber, an administrator, an editor, an author, or a contributor. Each of these different types of users have different capabilities and privileges within WordPress. So I'm going to say this guy is an author and he has the author's privileges and I'm going to send his password by email. Let's say for instance, you have this guy named Jimmy and you want him to contribute articles to your blog. So what you can do as the administrator is add the user, set his password and you put in his actual email address. So what would happen now, is when you add this user to a system, WordPress will send an email 
to this email address here with his user information. So then the author can log on on his own and start contributing content. So I'm just going to add user. So there we go. So now in the users panel that we have here, we can click on it by going here. We see we have two users now. We have the admin, we have Jimmy, we see their email addresses and you see what their role is. One is the administrator, that's the, you know, me because I created a blog. And I have uh, Jimmy. Now if I go into Jimmy, I can edit their profile and I can change anything I want about them, including the password and so forth. And I can change their role. So let's say uh, Jimmy becomes a pretty good author. I can make him an editor or I can make him a contributor. You can learn more about these different roles uh, on the wordpress.org site. All you need to know for this particular video is that you can add multiple users to your blog, giving WordPress a CMS-like capability. CMS, by the way, is short for Content Management System. And with these new users that you add to the system, you can set their capabilities in terms of, uh, well, in terms of their role. Now, administrator, author, editor, contributor, subscriber, they each have their own rights and privileges. Of course, the administrator is a super user. They can do whatever they want to the system. Uh, and versus a contributor has less capabilities than an editor, and the author has less capabilities than an editor, and so on. You get the idea. You can experiment around with this and look into this in the uh, documentation.